What? Huh? Hold on! Sorry, I couldn't hear you over all the compliments I've been getting about my movement watch. <laughs> You've heard us talking about movement watches for years, literally, because they're great, they're affordable, and they're stylish, and they make even Kevin look good. But you know what else they do? They make holiday shopping easy. These watches make the perfect purchase for you or anyone else in your life. Your girl, your guy, it doesn't matter. And remember, they start at only 95 bucks. Get yourself a movement watch and then you can monitor all the time you're saving by not going to the mall and getting some lame gift for your dad. Movement watches start at just $95. At a department store, you're looking at 400 to 500 bucks. Movement figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and the retail markup, providing the best possible price. Get 15% off today. <laughs> It was funny, right? When I did the yell thing. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to movement.com slash greggy. Buy them now and skip the holiday hassle. That's MVM. I just yelled. There's no one complimenting me in the room. You know, go to MVMT.com slash greggy. Join the movement. The only thing I can, the only place I can think of that upgraded their building in San Francisco is the Apple Store. Mm -hmm. They went from a giant like uh, store on on the market location mm -hmm. yeah. to up the block. They bought the fucking Levi's, Levi's building, building, and yeah. they made it this mega Apple Store with like an atrium and like an open air experience. What are they calling them now? Town squares or some Town shit? Town squares. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been to that? And they uh, they call the aisles avenues. Oh my god, it's it's yeah. beautiful. It's just stunning. Give, but just sell me your overpriced pen for my iPad. Yeah. Thank you very much. But I guarantee that store doesn't make any money. Mm -hmm. I guarantee that store is just it's, it's just, almost like a marketing fixture. Yeah, it's just marketing yeah. fixture. So when you this. start going. Down down the craft cocktail route. You're reading the books, you're doing all this yeah. stuff. Are you doing it just because you're interested or are you forecasting what we're talking about? No, oh, hell no, man. I wasn't forecasting anything. I was just into it. Like, we thought, I just honestly just thought this was, yeah, it was just a passion. Like, in the early days, I was like buying things like Campari and Green Chartreuse with my own money and taking them to the bar and just oh, making geez. cocktails for like my friends yeah. and people and people who I knew were into it. And I guess like there was really no, I didn't really think there was a future in it. Until like I started coming out to San Francisco more often, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Whoa, there's whoa, these like nice restaurants, man. People are paying for these drinks and yeah. these nice bars." And really, I would say like Bourbon and Branch going to Bourbon and Branch for the first time was kind of like eye opening, uh, eye -opening yeah. for me. I was like, "Whoa, there are other people out there who like care about there's this. People and are like you, nerdy about this, and like really care." <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I was like, and then I ended up applying. I was like working at Bourbon and Branch, I think in, like two months. I just grabbed all my stuff and just moved out here. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and so was that a different experience than working at? BJ's? Yeah, definitely. Like in yeah. terms of the, the people there and the clientele, like did you, how did the tips reflect on you when it came to that? Like were people um, tipping honestly, you Honestly, I'd more say no. Like, you actually make more money, I think, working like nightclubs and sports bars. Hmm. But then again, there isn't necessarily like a future for that. You know, no one's going to like, no one's going to like, you know, fly you out to London and visit their gin distillery if you, you know, work at just a random sports bar. But this is what's fascinating to me about this, right? Because I, and I, I often <laughs> envy people um, who like... You might not necessarily have a plan, but you know you have a passion for something. Yeah, and I've and I've looked in a it's lot contagious. of people. A lot of people who are successful how just talk about that that they have that same kind of background mm -hmm. where it's like no it was never the plan to do like for instance uh, i watched uh jerry seinfeld's new documentary jerry before seinfeld right it's on netflix oh, i gotta watch that it's a, it's good it's, it's not list. it's not great but it's good but what he talks about is he was just like i was drawn to comedy and i just really liked doing comedy and i just thought to myself if i can make a little bit of money and and sustain myself and I can do this forever, well then that's, I'm, I'm very happy with that. And of course he goes on to be one of the most, you know, um, thriving comedians Dude, so rich, ever, yeah. right? He's fucking super rich. Um, but I just, I find that fascinating because you're told from from the day one, right, that you have to go to school, you have to get a degree, you have to get a job, you have to work, you have to climb a corporate ladder. But yet time and time again, I see people that are totally contrary to that, that have just followed their passions, yeah. smart people like you, creative people like you, who have then figured out kind of like, Hey, there's this is something I have that's a marketable skill, and there's this bridge, burgeoning market for it, and let's capitalize off yeah. of this, right? <clears throat> at what point, at what point really, did you open Polite? Um, what 2012 or 2000, 2013? Okay. Oh wow. Um, that yeah. is 
Not that long. Yeah. Oh, we're, was, about, yeah. we're about to have our fifth year anniversary. Um, we're also February. throwing our community Christmas party there. When's that, Joe? I forget. What's the uh, date? The 11th? The 11th, of December. The, 11th of December. the 11th of Monday, December. Monday, the 11th yeah. of oh, December. We're, doing a entire, we're actually not going to be polite provisions for that month. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be a Miracle on 30th Street. We're doing the entire bar just Christmas. The I fuck love out. that. Yeah, I, I am not it. a Christmas guy. I'm not a fucking holidays guy. Yeah, yeah, that is cool as all hell. I told my What's that even going to mean, though? I was like, by December 26th, you guys are going to hate Christmas. They just laughed like, oh, we don't care, man. We don't care. That's awesome. Well, I'm, it, for me, it's such a great merging of last year going up to Montreal and one of the bars Jen's was friends with up there, right? They did the same thing where they turned their bar into Christmas and I yeah. never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. She said, like, we got to go get one shot it, because we were out getting wasted one night. And we, wa I walked in there and I was like, what the fuck? So to be able to see you do yeah. it and like already see the articles <clears throat> being written about it, right? Because you're, yeah, you're changing your name, you're putting fake snow in, you're putting trees in, you're putting candy Everything, canes. Man. Like in your bar, plate's awesome. Yeah. I, I would hope a lot of people, if you haven't been there, you've seen photos of the meet and greets and stuff where it's just a, Amazing space, period, let alone to be decked out now on Christmas. It's gonna be rad. Yeah, I'm psyched, man. Yeah. But to Nick's point, mm. you're going, you go to Bourbon and Branch, like, how do you go from being world class bartender, like, or just being mm -hmm. bartender to world class bartender to being bar owner to being, I'm going to drink at this gin distillery across the globe? Yeah, but what I think what it was was, um, you know, because working at uh, like a you know award winning bar or something is one thing, but I think really what is when I did um, when we did the bar at Rick House, that's really kind of what helped put it over put you the, on top. the map. Yeah, because um, me, me, and some of the guys there that that put the program together, I, we did something like fucking pretty awesome there, right? What does and that even mean though? What is a bar program? A bar program is kind of where you actually come in and you create the infrastructure, you do the training, you do like you create a menu, you create um, a custom cocktail, yeah, things like that. Everything, the whole concept, you're kind of doing it top to bottom where it's yeah. just like, you're not just handing everybody a packet and be like, okay, so what are, are they doing drinks. then? A lot of these places are kind of like, you know, they'll go to a place like Rick house and they just see like, Oh, this place is cool. Um, here's our menu. And then they, but there's no training. There's no like cohesive philosophy from so top to bottom. They'll own the, the space. Mm -hmm. They'll kind of make it look how they want it to look. And then you come in and just give them everything else, like all the other tools yeah. that they'll need. The, the sooner we can get in, the better. Because then we can kind of get involved with like right. the infrastructure and actually building the bar and design. Like That's why I feel like Polite is so, it, the drinks are so fucking quick there because I'm a bartender and I designed the back the the, the, the workflow yeah. behind the bar. You so can tell, like, by the these way. These guys are just like, they're making a, you know, a drink you know, out of our menu that's like 90 drinks in the menu. And they're just, they're never even moving their feet. They're just like grabbing everything. Just Cause that's the thing that yeah. always kills me is like not even knowing that part of it, but going mm -hmm. to other bars and you see people running back and forth, running into each other behind you. Stop, hold on. Somebody you goes around. And you're just like, I mean, I'll tell you a story about a bar that was just like, you can tell this dude has never, the person who owned it had never worked in like a sports bar or a nightclub or anything. Cause you know, they, they, they just didn't know what the hell they're doing. Like you go, you order a drink, the place is packed and the guy goes and he just makes one drink. You know, oh God! Makes one drink. Okay, cool. He come, walks over to me. Oh, that's like you know, fourteen bucks. I get my credit card. The dude walks twenty feet to the Ugh. register. Walks by everybody who's thirsty. Rings it in. Brings back my card. Walks back twenty feet right by everybody. You see like, it all the time. What the fuck there, is there going are, on here? <laughs> Some of my favorite bars in the marina that I used to go to, I just won't go back to because I just yeah. don't have the patience for it anymore. These people think they, they have no sense of urgency. They have no respect for systems or infrastructure. No. It's just like. Yeah, or they're just, they no or, they're or you know, like, and and not to put it on to the bartender because bartenders, you know, generally are some of the hardest working people in the industry. Yeah. But maybe they're just burned out, and they're just like, yeah. there's too many fucking people, and we need one more person back here. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how it is, but like, I just, I don't, I don't like the feeling of having to fight someone for a cocktail, like fight no. to get into a bar at a cocktail. And I'm like, okay, people like that environment. So I just don't go to those anymore. I choose not to go to those anymore. But I'm like, how much better would this place be if I could just walk up and within 30 seconds, someone's like, what do you want? And then they come back with my drink and I walk yeah. away. No, so lovely. One experience I had with a friend of mine, I won't, I won't say his name. He's a, a good buddy of mine though. But this is when they were first getting into cocktails. He was just getting into them. was like, oh man, I was visiting San Diego. And he's like, hey man, I heard you're in town. I want you to come to my, come check out what we're doing at the spot I'm working. So I'm like, all right. So I came and check it out. You know, drinks were good, and he's just like, "Oh, let me make you some, man. It's our like, it's our uh, maple old fashioned. It's like our top seller right now. Everybody loves it." And so he comes over, he starts making it, and he's like, "Okay, cool." And he walks like 15 feet away, and he comes back and gives it to me. He starts making it, and he's like, "Okay, cool." And he walks like 15 feet away, and he comes back and gives it to me. I'm like, "Oh, it's really good." And then he's just like, "Before I leave, left, he's like, hey, if you have any advice for us? Any advice at all, man?'" You cracked like, your knuckles. And, like, and I was just like, "If there's one thing you could do to improve this experience, is." If that's your number one selling drink, every well should have the maple syrup. Yeah. And he was just like, 
Good Whoa, fucking man, no point. Whoa, man, the way that's crazy. Yeah. I haven't even thought of that. Well, but that's the thing. Like, I feel like, and, and I'm a process nut, right? I yeah. look for systems. Yeah, like, I, I love, love I mean, Tim will tell you, like, I love there to be a step, like a 15-step like a thing of what to do for yeah. everything so that we can look at it and make it better and better and better, right? And that's what I try to do here, obviously. This system, is whole, this whole yeah. studio set up so that we so have one it's person. A step up from the bedroom. <laughs> it's, it's up, right? yeah. A little bit, but, like, it's designed so that people, like, obviously, Kevin has, has done his work over there, mm -hmm. but it's designed to be relatively turnkey and that's so yeah. that we can because the, the focus for us needs to be we need to be able to come in here focus on making the content and not worry about anything right mm -hmm. Kevin can take care of the whole thing that's great um, and so but I just feel like you don't learn that until you've gone through and, and had someone like you mm -hmm. be like no, nah, maybe or or like I learned it because of ten years at IGN, like doing it wrong. Yeah, and not that IGN does it wrong. I did it wrong there, and a lot of the things that they do right now were because of my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Were because of me going like, I don't know, maybe this should be this, maybe this should be this, right? Mm -hmm. And us learning and uh, about like how a proper studio should run, and now they're fucking pro as shit. Yeah, but I took all those lessons and brought them over here. Yeah, you're right. But it's very hard for people to understand that. So you, it's really cool that you do that for people. Well, the way you guys did it was perfect because you. You got to make all the mistakes while someone else is paying you. And well, it's like, <laughs> you know, hey you, get to, learn no, all, you get to learn we on make, their dime. We and make then you plenty of mistakes here. We have brand yeah. new mistakes we're making that yeah. cost every, us lots yeah, of money yeah. every every yeah. day. That's something how I try to train my staff. I'm just like, hey, one day you're going to own your own bar. And I want you to learn it right here. That way you're essentially oh, yeah. paid to learn how to run your own spot. So when does that start? Did you know you're going to college? You're going to do this. Then you realize you're in love with it. You start learning more. Does the plan become then? I'm going to get my own bar Finally, one Finally, when I moved to San Francisco, I was just like, wow, there's like a future for this. And all of a sudden, you know, reading the, the, the food press and the news, all of a sudden it's like, well, like people are getting written up in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. There's an article in, you know, Time Magazine about craft cocktails. And you're like, you know, you see Mad Men, you're like, okay, this is like yeah, a real yeah, yeah. thing. This is legit. This isn't just some weird yeah. hobby that I'm making money at. So it's like, but even then you're kind of just like, all right, well, I'm just going to ride it and see where it goes. And this next thing you know is, you know, I mean, I've cocktails would take me around the world. Hell yeah. And it's crazy, you know? Yeah. And I mean, even, I mean, I even have a lot of respect for you guys in the sense where I remember before you guys left IGN, you guys were like stressed and like, man, I don't know if people are going to care enough, man. Like, are, they, are we making a mistake? So it's, I would say, I mean... To come back to what you're saying, it's about believing yourself. Sure. And then knowing that you not only have the passion to make it happen, but you have the discipline. Because mm -hmm. I feel like so often you hear people say, oh, you got to be passionate about what you do. You're like, yeah, that's true. But you need to be disciplined and like willing to work for it. I had a I had a uh, an old boss a long time ago. I think about this a lot. Mm -hmm. well, I used to I used to work for a small videography business that shot like industrials, but primarily shot well, wedding videos. Mm -hmm. And when I had gotten the offer from IGN, I was like, of course I'm taking this. Right, this is a salary job with benefits, and it's like at a real company that has like all these amazing opportunities for me. And just sitting right there, and he pulled me aside. He's like, are you sure this is what you want to do? And I'm like, why do you say that? He goes, well, because. He goes, I've worked for people for before, and I can tell you now, having owned my own business, that that's where that's where you want to be. And I'm like, yeah, but I think back on that, and if I could have that conversation with him again, I'd be like, you're absolutely right, but you still need to get some of those tools mm -hmm. from other people to put into your tool chest before you go out on your own. Yeah. Because I know so many people that started their own video business that struggled for so long because they weren't in an ecosystem that could smashed them into the fucking sharp tool that they needed to be. Yeah. It was trial and error, but not at a level that mattered. And when I came into IGN, it was like, the first interview I had was with like, I forget the the guy's name, but with like a mega athlete on the 49ers. Mm -hmm. And they were like, and Fran was like, oh yeah, you just need to make sure you like this interview and shoot it right. And I'm like, um, I'd never done that before. What do you before. mean by right? I, know, I, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if Fran knew it. Like he was just like, get in there and do it right. And I look back at that interview and I'm like, that was hideous mm -hmm. but it had the makings of some of the things that you're seeing here now mm -hmm. right yeah um and you know whatever i mean he didn't care he was just happy to be at IGN. it looked like one of those things where he's in like the witness protection like i remembered in school i was like okay three point lighting and i kind of like googled it and then i looked back on that interview and i did it wrong like i had backlight which is good but i had the key light on the wrong side of him mm. so it looked like a fuck it looked like a, a lineup <laughs> he's just like, ah. like the light was right. but it doesn't matter because i'm like that but like because of that and because looking at that and then looking what other people in the industry were doing and then seeing seeing them be like, why does that shot look better? And then working, getting the opportunity to, to hire questions. freelancers that came in and be like, dude, you're doing this totally wrong. And then seeing that and seeing the CJ. audience go like, dude, why does this look so good? Or why does this look so bad? Things like that. And then figuring out how to edit and add B-roll and really craft pieces. All those were because I was willing to do that. But then after a certain point, it was, yeah, okay, what the next step for us is 
how do we take all those things, exactly what you just said, that passion and those tools and apply them to maybe something we want to do on our own? For me, my side of it is, and right in hindsight's 2020 always and whatever, I'm just pulling this out of my ass, but had I not ever went to IGN, had I just made YouTube videos, yeah. and Tim and Alfredo had just done that yeah. shit, I truly believe that we'd have 500,000 subs now. Probably. We had put out a video a week that like gets more views than anything we put out now, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't know how to monetize it. We would not be making any money. We would also mm -hmm. need to do other side jobs. We'd probably be baristas at Starbucks or Best sure. Buy or whatever still, um, just to make enough money right. to have two things add up to whatever. But being at IGN taught me how to look at it as a business. Yeah. And how to look at it as a, mm -hmm. what? how do I do what I want to do and not worry that if there's a million people watching it, but right. worry that there are enough people watching it mm -hmm. to sustain it and to actually turn it into something where I don't need to worry about making enough money. Mm -hmm. I just need to worry about sustaining the quality and pushing forward what we're doing. And it's like, I'm eternally grateful to IGN for allowing oh, me yeah. the opportunities to understand how sales teams work, how the structure, the, the, foundation and structure of what a video team is. Well, that was the thing too, right? It was because there was a time at IGN when Fox owned them where it was a lot more compart compartmentalized. And it wasn't it wasn't by any like, there was no reason for it. That's just how the business had run. And then I think there was a bit of a renaissance um, when they were bought out by Ziff because <laughs> the company downsized it a little bit. Yes, and does. what that gave us the opportunity to do was like yeah. really kind of interact with all those other cool, groups right? for the first time. Can I get um, a bowl? Let's get a bull cool, Greg. And I think that's cool because it allowed everyone to have the curtain to just kind of pulled aside and been yep. like, hey, everyone, just go over to sales and talk to them, mm -hmm. right? We yeah. had people that were specifically like, hey, I, I think it would be a good idea if we could have a little bit more collaboration between engineering and sales and like the top, the, the VPs and all those things. And, you know, to Paris credit and to France credit and the guys that ran it, they, they facilitated that. And I think that's a really, that was a really positive step for them. So Eric, I mean, we talk about ourselves all the time, right? And like what we've built. And it's that thing I know, thank you so much, going a million miles an hour ahead. Do you ever do the thing where you stop and look back and like, fuck, I own my own bar. And all these Dude, people. Because I have the bar in New York too. Oh, Boilermaker. right. Boilermaker. Yeah. Boilermaker. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you're doing this, like, you know, it seems like your career was, all right, doing this. All right, I'm doing this. Now I'm, I'm building uh, Rick, Rick House's plan. And then all of a sudden you have Polite. Okay, now you're helping with Boilermaker. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. I'd say it, it is pretty crazy. You get you get to the point where you're kind of just like, well, wow, like 15 years ago, none of these opportunities were available for a bartender. And, and just some of the stuff that we do, you know, just work with national accounts, like, you know, doing cocktail presentations at like Cheesecake Factory or yeah. something like that, right? Um, you know, directing they need film. Some help. I was just like there that. on the yeah. weekend. How dare you, sir? Well, well no, that's the problem. They've, I mean, that's they've why got, I, got their drinks oh, on man, point. They what, give you a giant, brother, giant Diet Coke. Yeah. We're, 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 like, they're, uh, um, their Moscow meal of all the chains was a lemonade. Yeah. It was a very bad. Their lemonade. Moscow Mule was a lemonade. Yeah, man. Yeah. It was, the Moscow Mule was in a cup like this big. Yeah, and it was just lemonade. Well, that was the thing. I mean, hanging out with Eric I'm, for I'm, so I'm, long. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to work. And that's the thing of like how <laughs> disappointing it is to go to a steakhouse, and I'm not even talking like necessarily a chain, just mm. a nice steakhouse in San Francisco. You're like, let me get an old fashioned. You get it, and it's all muddled and terrible. You're like. Yeah. Oh fuck! How is this possible? Like you know what I mean? Like it seems no, so easy. Seventeen, man. We have a YouTube video on this, and he's so perfect. You could easily watch it. And then the amount of times I was with Colin Moriarty, and he would get in fights with bartenders <laughs> God, when he would say, <laughs> "Can you not time. do that? Can you do this?" And he's like, "Well, that's not an old fashioned." Mm -hmm. Colin would be like, "No, it is. <laughs> no, it is," and start arguing <laughs> with them. To pull him off the bar. Yeah, exactly. You've changed I'm everybody's you lives, outside, man. <laughs> no, um, yeah, man. It is kind of it is kind of weird when like I mean. Just I've, I was in uh, Belize recently, and, and 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 I signed an NDA, so I can't tell you why I was there. For but, some of your trips, yeah. though, explain how that happens. Like, is it that you're buying so much gin, people are inviting you to come to tour the? Sometimes that happens, but then sometimes it's one of those situations like, hey, um, we're I'm, I'm going to make something up here. Sure. We're in um we're in Jamaica, and we're releasing a new rum, right? Yeah. Um, we're releasing a new like Jamaican funky rum, and we want you to come out and, you know. Take a look around the distillery, try some of our products, um, meet our distiller and tell us where you think this is going to fit into the market and maybe, you know, uh, bring some, more some ideas with us. And what we'll do is, you know, we'll charge them and we'll kind of go out there and, and meet Kind of a consulting team. fee. Yeah, it's yeah. a consulting fee. Sure. Just kind of sure. figure out like where it belongs. And you're like, okay, cool. I tasted your bourbon or your scotch. I think this is the market you would need to go for. Mm -hmm. um, these are these are the accounts you're going to want to get into first. And we kind of just basically... You know, regardless of what the spirit is, we'll kind of talk to them on, on how it should roll out. At any point, have you thought about starting your own like brand of alcohol? Have you thought, thought about George Clooneying it? Never know what could happen. Bro. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. What could happen. I'll tell you one thing right now, man. Whoo, 
looking at what George Clooney made off that last deal, oh, brother. That's that's oh, insane. Shit. Well, I mean, good for him because the poor guy, you know, he's not the best looking dude. He's never can't rub two brand. pennies together. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, he doesn't have two he pennies. Totally together. He can't get anyone amazing to no. marry him. He's just guy, really just never fucking gets losing laid, it. You know, yeah. it's like. That could have a great idea. Yeah, uh, this is all out of order in a time yeah. warp for you, the viewer watching this later on YouTube. But just yesterday, we did the episode with Justin, a Patreon supporter who came on, Ooh. and him and two of his colleagues from his other business are starting their own whiskey. Yeah, and they're oh, making damn. it down in uh, Mexico. He's telling us all about it. They're, they're, what their you know their distillery systems is going to be. It's actually a good move. Tell him to email me. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> and that's what I was like. I'm like it's funny because Eric's down tomorrow. But it is that thing of like how awesome it is to see people able to get into this business and make it work and it's the same thing i always think about not bourbon or spirits but ryan de la rosa over in texas a fan of ours for forever he was the first person ever at ign to hit up damon and be like hey if i just flew i'm a big game scoop fan if i flew myself out would you and greg hang out and we were like all right yeah you want to come to the sega party we're going to that's how different it was right because nobody ever asked those things yeah. and we met him then and now he's like we're, he's a, a home brewer. He's making all his own beer, and he's getting ready to start his own Flying Rhino, I believe. Uh, br- great brewery, name. restaurant, yeah, all that stuff. Name. You know what I mean? That's a, you guys, by the way, kudos to everyone. You guys have great fucking names. Polite Provisions, <laughs> provisions and is a, a, is a badass fuck. fucking name. Flying Rhino is a pretty awesome name, too. In the, 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 you know, opening a brewery can be tough, but yeah. the fact that he's doing it in a restaurant is actually a better move. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's if, what kills yeah. people, right? Like, when I talk to my, my friends who do run restaurants in San Francisco, that's they're always like, well, you know what makes the money is the booze. And yeah. if you don't have enough thing for that, you're not making enough margins, so it all falls apart and it falls apart. And that's why, like, we we doubled back to it a while ago of whatever. And when we talk about ourselves, it's passion. You guys are going to get fucked up. On We're making one. it for Joey, too. Don't worry. <laughs> Joey's in there, too. He's not being low, he's not being conservative on these pores. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> don't worry. Tim's like, oh, i got to stop drinking so much. Nope, not today. Not today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's the fact that, like, house. These are thirsty boys, man. They are, they're grown boys. <laughs> they're they're grown boys. boys. I love boys. seeing you succeed, Eric, because yeah. you deserve it so much. But then the fact that you have so much fun doing it. Yeah. You're one of the, you're when I think about like I would do the shit for free. Yeah. And when really? I think about not a care in the world, I think about you. Mm-hmm. And I know it's not true. We're lucky yeah. enough that we're friends and we hang out and we go to New Orleans, we do these things together. And I've seen you not get mad, but you never get Greg Miller mad. Yeah. And, but like, <laughs> if I can tell Eric's upset about something, I'm going to go fuck. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? But like, you are literally like so nice and so into it and you have fun and you work with your friends and you do all this stuff. And like, it seems like your biggest problem is like when you have to go on tour for something, you're like, oh, I'm drinking. 14 days in a row, brother. Oh, man, that, that's it's killing me. Yeah. 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 That's a real thing, though, because, yeah. like, honestly, uh, you know, I've been trying to lose a little weight and get a little, get a little, get a little fitter. It's working out. Eh, not so much anymore. But, uh, but that's a, that is something that I have yet to figure out, right? Which is what's the road schedule going to look like? How do you maintain some yeah, level of this sanity? Oh, my God. But, like, <laughs> even me going, like, there's just something weird in my brain that the second I get on a plane, I'm like, yeah. Vacation. Fuck it. Yeah. I mean, like, let's play reunion. I hit the ground. The fucking we're on the ground for one day, and I'm like, who wants to order pizza? And then the right? rest of, from pizza, who wants to order and pizza Domino's. again? Yeah, I was like, we I haven't had monster. Domino's in a while. Oh my god, we're watching fucking American Vandal. We're having a slumber party. Greg's American upstairs. Vandal's it's it's so completely good. underrated. It's it is so, so good. good. It is um, so good. Yeah, but yeah, I wonder. I, oh, we're really long on this. I don't know if you want to. Wrap I this think one this up or is not. one of our rambling topics. Yeah. Okay, or uh, shows. Hundred percent. I'm gonna transition here in a second. To bar- I think bartender at large is like part of this. Uh, I do want to talk about that, but the question i have is like what everything that's happening here and maybe we don't have the tools for this but do we feel like ever that's going to happen with like the marijuana industry right Ooh. and that's that's my big question because i know marijuana. that's that's the undiscovered country right now right that's where the gold rush is for a lot of people you yeah. have a lot of people trying to figure out how to navigate the weird legalities of starting their own dispensaries yeah and like you can grow some but you have to like well i feel like that should pop it off already it is yeah, but maybe. that's like, my question especially like, when I have, like friends from other state other states and they're like Wait, how much was this? It's twenty bucks. You got all this for twenty bucks? Yeah, man. Like, it's and free market, brother. But that's, but that's, that's my question. So, like, that's what I'm gonna be fascinated to watch. Is like, is do we think we're ever gonna get to a time where? Because right now, I think marijuana still is very, very stigmatized. Where like you can't smoke a joint. Like you can drink a beer on the sidewalk. Someone like, hey, that guy's cool. He's drinking a beer on the sidewalk. But you smoke a joint. Everyone's like, oh no, no, man. Like that's still. Really? Someone might, someone might fuck Here with in you. San still. Francisco, like you see. Have you, has anyone ever reacted that way to weed? I, I mean, I, 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 I no, not here. Yeah. But what I mean is like, uh, you know, if I, if I'm at a bar, it's still culturally acceptable to walk into a bar for me uh-huh. and, and, uh, Instagram that I'm having a cocktail with Tim. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. But I don't feel comfortable if you and I were to smoke a joint 
at a dispensary being like, we're fucking, yeah, we're blazing mm. up, right? Because I just feel like we're not there as a society. Now, as a quick time out, when it's legal in California, we are doing an episode high, right? I think oh, it's no, legal man. already, though. No, we doing. That's what I'm saying. I'll tell you what the future is, man. I'll tell you what the future is for weed and where, where, how people are going to make more money. Hey, can we grab more ice? Yeah, 100%. Cool, Greg. I'll, I'll tell you what, like, w once you can actually, once you create. Can we get more ice? Like, and people are going to watch this, like, I don't know, 10 years from now and be like, oh, yeah, of course they fucking do that. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, you know, it's obvious. But, like, a bar where you can actually go and enjoy it at. That's a perfect, Where you yes. can actually go into a place and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll take this, this, and that. Because. Like, an and you smoke it and there's fucking cookies and food. Fuck yeah. And it's, like, kind of classy so you don't feel like. You know, um, it's, well, it's a, craft cocktail dodgy. culture. Yeah, yeah, it'll be like really nice and really fancy, and there'll be servers that come by. And, and do you feel like it's going to be that, or do you feel like it's going to be you're going to go to a craft cocktail bar and they all, they will also sell marijuana? Uh, I, I don't know. I think a lot of people are kind of afraid to mix them too much. Oh, I, I, they fuck me up when I mix yeah. them too much, so I won't do it. But plus, I'm also like the thing is, I think for a lot of bar owners, you don't necessarily want some a tourist coming in. You know, especially maybe in like a, a more of a tourist city, someone coming in who's like, oh, they have free weed. The weed's legal here. And they smoke something that's way better than they've ever smoked, and they're just bombed. Yeah, yeah. And then they have it old fashioned, then that dude is just sitting on yeah, just all over the place. Like yeah. Well, that, you kind of don't but, necessarily want that. But that's the crazy thing, right? Because I, I recently went to Denmark, and they I, I stumbled across um, because of a recommendation for one of the best friends this uh, this really really cool gaming. Uh, mm. uh, I don't know what you would call it, but it, it, kind of like a board gaming establishment where people could go and drink, but you could also get coffee and you get little snacks. And that is really, that was like kind of a cultural thing for them. It wasn't, it was niche, but it wasn't so niche that it's like the fucking board game place down there that went out of business. You know, mm. like they, everyone, it, it the was, Empire Board Game Club on oh Ocean man, Avenue. I, I often wonder, I often wonder what that Bless used to you, be like. Friend. Thank you. But, but that was cool to me because I'm like, oh, the, I, I walk in there. There are kids here. There are adults here. There are teenagers here. There are older people here. Everyone's enjoying their time because this is a part of their establishment. Then I come back here and I'm like, it really is sad that we only have, if you're an adult, like two acceptable places you can go at night. There's either a bar or a restaurant that serves alcohol. And that's hey, pretty much it. Don't underrate Starbucks, my friend. But they're not open all night. Well, yeah, on San Bruno it is. Yeah, that's fair. There's a Laurel, yeah. the Yo, Laurel Woods one. CHP's got yeah, Laurel, Laurel, Laurel There's also the, the Burger King one that that dude was making a joke about. Shady, where he's like, Shady Burger King. I love dude. that joke where he's like, he's like, this is not so much a Starbucks as it is a uh, crack dealership that also sells coffee. <laughs> like, there's some weird like coffee thing going on in the back. Yeah, there's some weird coffee thing going on in the back. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click here to watch another episode of the Game Over Greggy Show. Click here to subscribe. Click here to go over and support us on Patreon. Remember, every buck helps. Click down here for whatever cool Greg wants to send you today. I hope it's rap music.